the pork just breaks apart to little pieces. It's so soft. It's going to be just melting your mouth. So I'm going to try and sneak in. Try and make a barrel. Mom. <laughs> Here I have my private broccoli. Pork on rice, baby. Pork on rice. And these are special Taiwanese butt nuts. And this is special Taiwanese Juro Fun. We are now at the Cavalan Distillery. Yeah, it's and just about an hour and a half to get here. Yeah, it's raining. It's lots of palm trees, but we're ready for some whiskey. Yeah, oh, it's actually quite a cool building, but um, it's really hard to show you because it's raining and I can't get yeah. the camera wet. But That's anyway. okay. What we'll do is we'll try to go there and quickly take a photo from a different vantage point, but yeah. we'll see. We don't know how much we can film in here, so. We'll, we'll do what we can. We're about to enter the area where they take care of the barrels just for the Vigno Barrique. Um, they, do, they do the process called the STR process. It's called shaving, toasting and recharring. Where literally it means that they shave the barrel inside the barrel, they toast it and rechar it, uh, and that's only for the Vigno Barrique. So no other um, whiskey gets that process. So this is that process here. We're about to look. Mm. As you can see behind me, this is the last stage of the STR, the recharring, um, and they're just recharring this barrel, and it's done. DIY room is where you get samples of different whiskies and you blend them yourself. So we're about to blend our own whiskey. We have three barrel samples over here and um, we design our own portions of the barrels and we decide which one is going to be our final bottling. It's like a little science lab, like Breaking Bad, Breaking Bad whiskey style over here. Flasks. 
whiskey in it, or three different whiskies, and you have to amount it to six moles. And that's still the test tube. And then you have to taste them, and then you choose which one you want to get bottled. So if you get to bottle them in quite a nice bottle, like this, it's pretty cool. So this is my blend, which I get to fill. This over the seal. Take it easy, not too fast. Not as candy as a candy, you There you go, your private bottling. Yeah. Why didn't you write your name as Spoken with Karen? Okay. <laughs> so I have chosen my winning ticket. Okay. Here I have my private bottling. How cool is that? So we're doing a panel of eight whiskies today from the Cavalan Distillery and we're going to go through them. Cheers! This concludes our whiskey tour with Cavalan today. We're heading back to Taipei now, um, so we're hoping that our Uber driver said he would still stick around, is still about, and yeah. On our way to the food court, we haven't eaten anything since 7am, coming from the, the Cavalan Distillery Tour. I'm starving. Oh, what's this? Looks like chewy desserty things, which will appeal to me, but Karen will hate. Ooh, cake. Ooh, make good. Ooh, taro cake. Ooh, sushi. I'm just excited for everything because I'm freaking starving. Starving as hell. We decided to come to the mall food court, which is not like some normal food court. It's pretty exciting. Karen got beef noodle soup, as usual. And John got noodles and pork belly. And Delene got something fried. Chicken. Chicken. I'm getting something else. And I got this miscellaneous dish of vegetarian stuff, which looks like meat, so it doesn't count. How's the rice? Good. We are in a quest for Luro Fun. Luro Fun. We're not saying it in the proper accent. I think it's Luro Fun. Something like that. Because the guy kept looking at me going, what the hell are you saying? And I kept saying it and eventually he figured it out with the right tone. And we're gonna go, it's only a couple of stops away train wise. Should be good. And apparently this is quite famous because I asked um, around and they said no this is definitely very well known for the goodness and awesomeness so we are heading there pork on rice, pork on rice baby pork on rice so we are uh, gonna eat at the most famous Luro Fun place Thank you. Well, oh, that was literally less than 30 seconds. <laughs> so, where are we? We're at a. Uh, Jinfeng Crazy Pork. Jinfeng. This is the food that started to come out already, and literally we ordered 30 seconds ago, so there you go. So, we're going to show you the food. Thank you, Mother. And how about this one? This weird mysterious green thing, I'm not sure what it is, but can I try it? 
And these are special Taiwanese butt nuts. And this is special Taiwanese juro fun. The pork just breaks apart, little pieces, it's so soft. That's gonna be just melt in your mouth goodness. And then you've got the egg. This is, this egg seems like it's been braised for a long time because the outside of it is kind of hard. So this is one of the more famous dishes around here. This is the fun. This is basically pork belly that's been simmered to high hell until it's dissolved to little pieces and then put over a glorious, glorious bowl of rice. Mm. Mm. Wow. That is delicious. The flavor is just so rich. The flavor is just so rich and so authentic. And the yelling in the background really adds to the flavor and the spice. Uh, every time I get scared, it's like, oh, am I doing something wrong? But it's funny. So this is a pork belly. These are actually bits of pork belly that's bigger chunks. And then there is also a side of what looks like it could be pickled, pickled um, bamboo shoot, which is awesome because it's fiber. Mm. Mm. Now bamboo shoot's delicious. I'm gonna try. Oh, look at that. Oh yeah. Look at that. That is a perfect ratio of fat and meat. Mm. Mm. I could just slide down and die right now. After that, it's just absolutely, absolutely glorious. And oh, that was so good. That was, in my opinion, it's worth a trip. Just that one. Just that one. I also ordered the noodle equivalent, what looks like the noodle equivalent of the rice with the braised pork, the little bits of pork. Yeah, it's got mushroom and then little bits of pieces. So not exactly the same, but similar kind of um, concept. Mm. The flavor is more subtle than the other ones, but if Chinese pasta is your jam, then your Chinese spaghetti right there is going to be a trick. But I prefer the rice because everything is better with rice, the science. But it's, it's still delicious, you can't complain. It's a very, it's, it's a very personal problem. Over that one. The noodles are great. Mm. Very nice. I think unanimously the pork belly on rice is the best. Karen is a little bit zombie-like right now because I forced her to wake up from a nap, a mid-evening nap. I'm just, just sitting here eating my egg. Yeah. Because I, um, I was like, time to eat, time to eat, and I just woke her up. So she doesn't, she doesn't like being woken up. Um, I would say the best dish of the night is that slice of pork belly on the rice with the bamboo shoots. By far the best. The thing is, we do get these kind of places all over. We don't specifically have the name for the part of Google. We're too tired to kind of walk around to look for something like this. Yeah. I mean, if we were here longer, if we were here longer, we'd probably literally just walk and find a place and try it out at random. Um, Google is good, but at the same time, you do find gems that aren't listed or aren't famous. Um, it's just because you're only here for just a small amount of days, you can't do it all, you know? And what's next, bubble tea? Yes. Oh, there you go. I do love Taiwan, how everywhere you go, there's just milk tea everywhere. So I don't even know what this is called, but it sells milk tea. That's all I care about. I ordered you a large. No, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. It scares me. It scares you. I'm being defeated by the hot soup thing. Consumption. Consumption. I feel like when we get home, I'm gonna be having cucumber every day. Yes, I think. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That's actually a good one. Because it's interesting because we, we have condensed a lot of eating in a 10 day period. Yeah. Because. And you 
kind of yeah. squeeze it in because you, you get FOMO. You're like, I want to try this and I want to try this. I feel like... Yeah, we're consuming the like shit out of the world. Oh, look, it's more than that that's getting blocked with me. <laughs> and more than just my arteries, baby. I wanted to block a trend today, so I got Thai tea, brown sugar boba thingy. And I ordered a large, I thought. Oh, yeah, it's a little bit bigger. There you go. That thing's bigger than my face. Yeah? So I regret the decision immediately when I saw it being made, but it was too late. So, no judging, please. I am judging you. Yeah, I know. You are, I'm right. looking at you with my judgy eyes. It's okay. <laughs> Stop judging me. <laughs> Let me try it. Oh. Really good. The Thai tea. Fantastic. Very different to the normal ones. It's really, you can really taste the tea. And it's a healthy orange as well. See? It's a healthy orange. So you know it's healthy. Sticking to our one milk tea quota a day. This is just the brown sugar milk tea, which I tend to get most of the time. Karen has mixed it, hopefully. I've got an OCD, I gotta mix the crap out of everything. I'm purposely not gonna mix the crap out of it, so do you go haywire? It's making me uncomfortable. I am very uncomfortable. How is it for the brown sugar? Very nice, but I do think the Thai cheese is actually better. There you go. There you go. When you go audacious, you get audacious results. Mm -hmm.